I've often wondered, can you get pizza oven quality pizza on a gas grill? Pizza ovens are super popular right now, but it's not in everyone's budget to add another outdoor cooking appliance. In this video, we're going to show you an easy pizza dough recipe that you can make at home, bake it in both our gas grill and our pizza oven, and show you how to get fantastic results no matter what you're cooking on. We're taking a pizza dough recipe from my buddy at Wood Oven Boston over on Instagram, and you ought to follow this guy if you're into pizzas. This recipe uses unbleached bread flour that you can get in pretty much any US supermarket, and that's important since many dough recipes use double zero flour, which can be much more difficult to source here in the United States. Now we're using bread flour, and it excels in a lower heat environment like a grill, where double zero flour does better in a high heat environment like a pizza oven running 800 plus degrees. So here's the recipe that we're working with today. This recipe makes four 310 gram dough balls, which is perfect for about a 14 inch pizza. Now we're working by weight, so a scale that measures in grams is going to be important when you get into making your own dough. If you don't have a scale that measures in grams, I'll put a link below in the description with a few of my favorites. We'll start by measuring out 699 grams of unbleached bread flour. We'll have 503 grams of ice cold water, 2.75 grams of active dry yeast, 21 grams of salt, and 14 grams of olive oil. Now I put all of that into the mixer and let it combine for about 10 minutes on the lowest speed. I'm using our KitchenAid mixer with the dough hook today, and you can mix this by hand and skip the fancy mixers, but I like to set it, walk away, and keep checking things off the list, so that's how we're going to roll today. I'll link this mixer down below if you're looking for a mixer upgrade. We've loved ours and we've had it for quite a few years. After 10 minutes, your dough should look like this, and that's when I will usually kick the speed up a notch to fold the dough for another three or four minutes. I'll weigh out the dough ball portions to get my roughly 310 gram dough balls, and I'll put them in my proofing box, and they'll go into the fridge for about 48 hours. This is a cold proof recipe, and you could skip this step, but I highly recommend it to let the flavors fully develop. Now, if you don't want to do the cold proof, just let this rise on the counter for about four hours and you can put it to use. Now, these proofing trays, I think they're fantastic in the fridge and I'll be sure to leave a link down below where you can find them on Amazon. Now, they've changed our dough game here at the lab and I think everyone who's making pizza dough should get a pair of these. Now, the day of the cook, I'll pull the dough tray out of the fridge and I'll leave it on the counter for about four hours before I'm ready to make pizza. If it's a super hot day and the kids are going to be in and out leaving the door open, then I'll put it in the oven and leave the oven turned off with the door closed to keep it from rising too fast. Now after four hours at room temperature, here's what our dough looks like before we get it on the grill. On the gas grill, my goal is to get it up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit before I'll launch a pizza. We're using the American Renaissance gas grill that we built into our outdoor kitchen, and I just set the knobs to medium high, and we should see about 500 degrees in just about 10 minutes. For the pizza oven, we're using the new Solo Stove Pie Prime gas oven, and it takes about 20 minutes to get to a full temperature of 700 degrees. Now, yes, we're going to be preheating the pizza oven hotter than the grill, and that's because we need the stones on the floor of the oven to get to a good temperature to crisp up the crust. We'll turn it down when we launch the pizza, but we need to get those stones warm first. Now getting the dough into a pizza shape is one of the challenges of pizza making, regardless of what you're cooking it on. I like to use semolina flour as my bench flour to get pizza pressed out, and I'll link to that below if you need a good source for semolina. It's less coarse than cornmeal and won't burn as bad if you get some on the grill or in the oven. Now I start by laying the dough ball into the semolina and then turning it over to get some on both sides. I just press my dough out using my fingers to get it into a circular shape, making sure to leave about an inch on the outside where there's some air left in what will be the future crust. I'll pick it up and let the weight of the dough stretch it out a bit. And once I'm to that 12 to 14 inch size, it's time to dust the pizza peel with semolina, place the crust down on top of the peel and top the pizza. 
Now, but before the toppings go on, one of the things that we like to do is dock the dough first. We use a dough docker to run across the dough and it makes little indentations in the dough to help ensure that our crust won't rise in the middle of the pizza. We don't use it on the outside of the crust since we want the rise there, but on the bottom of the pizza, that's where we dock before we top. Now this is a new accessory from Solo Stove that just released a couple of weeks ago, and I'm loving it. I've already used it on 10 or 15 pizzas, and I'm not having any issues with the pizza crust rising where it's not supposed to. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can get one if you're interested. In our testing on the gas grill, we used the standard factory grates that came in our American Renaissance grill first. We found that the factory grates were wide enough apart that we had some sag in the dough during our tests. I was initially worried that we were going to have a bottom crust that was doing the wave, or worse yet, we wouldn't be able to get it off the grates at all. Now, after letting it go on medium high for 90 seconds, the crust leveled out and it came off the grill no problem. Now, through multiple tests, we found that the 500 degree range was the best temperature in our tests on this grill, but it's not just the temperature that matters. On a gas grill, it's where the temperature is coming from that's important. Gas grills heat from underneath the grates, so the first thing that will tend to burn is the bottom of the crust. We want a firm, crispy crust though, so we do want some bottom heat, but we also want our crust to rise and our cheese to melt, so we need that top-down heat as well. What I found that works the best is turning all the burners on the grill to high to preheat the grill. Now when it comes time to launch the pizza, leave all of the burners on high for 30 seconds and then turn the burners that the pizza is directly resting over down to medium so we don't burn the bottom of the pizza. This is the method that I found to get some lovely pizzas on a gas grill. I'm really actually quite happy with the results. Now a bottom crust that's crispy and sounds like this is always a winner for me. Now the rigidity of the crust when we hold a slice that's not something you see with most pizza oven pizzas in the Neapolitan style. Now, if you like a little bit more crisp to your crust, the gas grill is certainly a way to get it. If you like your crust less crispy, you could turn those burners down to medium low and get that soft pillowy dough that you're looking for. Now, if you wanna dial the crispness of your crust up to 11, then you ought to check out these hard anodized aluminum grill grates. They're from a company called Grill Grate, and you can use them two ways. First is to put a mean sear mark on proteins on the grill. That's the grate's upside. But when you flip them over, you have a flat panel that you can use like a griddle flat top. We tested pizza on Grill Grate panels as well, and that kicked the crispness of the crust to almost cracker-like crunch. It took a bit of playing with the temperatures, but we found that using the grill grate panels at the 450 degree mark was a good temperature for them. What I don't recommend is turning your grill as high as it will go, letting the grill grate panels preheat to 650 degrees or higher, and then dropping pizza dough on them. We completely carbonized a few pizzas before we really found the sweet spot. In our pizza oven, we have the stone temperature over 700 degrees, which is where I want it to be. Now, we're using the same dough that we used in the gas grill here, and since we're using bread flour, I'm going to turn down the oven when I launch the pizza so that the crust doesn't burn. Since the heat is coming from the back of this oven, I'm keeping an eye on the crust at the back of this pie to tell me when I need to turn. Now, I rotate the pizza about a quarter turn three different times, and then we have a pizza that's ready to go in just about 60 to 90 seconds. This pizza oven is much faster than the gas grill, but there are a few differences in how this dough performs between the two cooking devices. When we look at the bottom of this crust, it's not nearly as done as the crust in the gas grill. Now, there's not really a sound when we scrape the bottom, and we did get a fuller rise out of the crust. The higher heat gives us more rise and the cheese is melted completely and nicely browned. The main difference is really seen when we hold up a slice though. Check out the difference in the firmness of the bottom crust with the pizza oven. Now this is what I've come to expect from most Neapolitan pizza. Many people will fold over the first bite since the crust isn't firm and they'll eat it that way so it's not better or worse, it's just different. So we're back to the question. Can you get a pizza oven quality pizza on a gas grill? I think the answer is yes. It's not the same in all aspects of the pizza, but it's a really great pizza that comes off this gas grill. 
Now, as long as you're working with a pizza dough, like the recipe you can get in the description below or over at our website at thebarbecuelab.com, that's the first step to success. Having the right dough makes all the difference in good pizza. The second thing I want to emphasize is good fire management. If you don't have the grill hot enough and you put a pizza on, that dough is going to sag between the grill grates and you'll have a mess on your hands. Now, if you leave the fire too high, you can burn the bottom of the pizza pretty quickly. So it's about managing the fire to ensure your success. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you need any of the supplies or accessories that we talked about in today's video, Melissa does a fantastic job keeping links in the description below for you and also on our website over at thebarbecuelab.com. We have an entire shop page dedicated to the best tools in outdoor cooking, and it's there for you 24 seven whenever you're looking for the best tools for you or to give as a gift. There's more behind the scenes fun over on the major social channels. So if you haven't joined us over there yet, we'd love to show you what else goes on here around the barbecue lab that doesn't make it into these videos. We have a lot of fun and we'd love to have you join us. Now, if you want to print out this recipe, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can print it just to make things easy. I'm David and behind the camera is Melissa from the barbecue lab and get out there and grill some pizza. Leave us a comment when you do, and let's chat in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you next time.